the Colonial Sports Center. The base is the casino of the Cota Logano para hablar sobre la temporada hasta el momento. I talked to Enoch Cheeks this past week about his jump in production in his second season. And as the cross kicks up their season this week, see how they fared against Duke. Love in the air. Will you be via more on this episode of CSC? Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. I'm Tyler Gallo, along with Colby Sherwood and Colby. We love Army Athletics, don't we? That's right. We have a slam dunk of an episode for them, for you guys at home tonight, with a lot of with a lot of Army basketball, not to mention some softball and lacrosse, as was talked about in the intro. That's right. We're getting into the the swing of things here for full sports, so let's get right into men's basketball, Colby. That's right. Let's hit the hardwood here first for some men's basketball. IUPUI is quite literally the worst team in men's college basketball in every single metric possible. They have not beat a single D1 school all year. Were the Colonials, did the Colonials fall in this trap game? Let's take a look. And they did not. They won 66 to 49. BJ Maxwell dropped 16 points for the Jaguars. Boston Stan was kind of like John Carlos Stan in the playoffs. Did not show up with 10 points. Cleo Spear did his thing, 11 rebounds, 17 points. And Enoch Shanks had a pretty good game. Uh, two for three from three, eight rebounds, and 14 points. That's right, and we'll be talking to him later. Now we'll move over to their next game, which was at home. They return home to take on Detroit Mercy, a team that they played in the Horizon League Tournament last year. Would Antoine Davis have a repeat performance of his 46-piece chicken nugget in the playoffs? We'll take a look at it here from the highlights from the Event Center. Started things off here in the first half, and no other than Antoine Davis from way out. He's contested and nails it right there, and look at that. Blows a kiss to the crowd in the spirit of Valentine's Day. Now we got on the other side. Michael Green the third gets it from Enoch Cheeks and nails it right there. He answers uh, for his own, and here's Antoine Davis again. No question. Nails it one more time. And he tools incredulous on the sideline. That's not the last time he'll be incredulous in this uh, after this game. And then from the corner, Matt Johnson gets in on the action and nails a three. Detroit Mercy up big, and then Michael Green the third once again. MG3 hits it right there. A nice bucket. Moving on to the second half now. Cheeks inside. Matt Mayer slam as RMU tries to come back here in this game. Now we got another night. We got another nice uh, run of passing here. Is Brandon Stone to Enoch Cheeks from way downtown. He nails it. Cheeks. We'll talk to him in quite a little bit. And now on the other side, Antoine Davis. No question. Once again, boom from the outside. He is unbelievable. He hit his 2,500th career college collegiate point. 76th player to do that all time. Now late in the game, Khalil Spear, with what air on that dunk right there, slams it in there. Colonials still down by 17 and moving it forward to the corner. That's gonna be Willie Isiani getting in on the action the center as RME falls by a score of 79 to 62. And now we'll take it to Andy Tool for some post game sound. I thought we got off to a good start. I thought we had some good energy to start the game. Uh, got some really good shots early and then can you sustain your effort, right? We, we have some standards within our program. The first one is sustained effort, and we certainly weren't able to do that. Uh, and again, it's when we don't guard or guard well, we struggle. And uh, that certainly was, was case in point tonight. So in the post-game press conference, it was no question that, you know, as you saw before, Antoine Davis had a big game. Andy Tool did not mince words when it came to Antoine Davis in this edition of CSC Comic of the Week. I don't need, I don't really even know what that means. Distracts you. I don't. I don't. I don't. Scored twenty five hundred career points. He scored forty six points. Is that in their head? None of these guys were here. None of these guys were here. I mean, like, we. we here's the problem. We we we're we're trying to distract them. We're telling them, yo, this guy had forty six on us last year, and they're going. It's probably not that good. I mean, did, did anyone, does anybody watch him warm up? Like, we played him four times. I don't know if you should say this as an opposing head coach. I love watching him warm up because the dude doesn't miss a shot. Like, I almost told my wife, you should come early tonight and tell my kids to come and watch it because this is how shooters shoot. All these guys that come in the gym, and, and we should probably go off the record because I could do this for hours. All these guys that come in the gym, all these guys that come in the gym and think they're shooters, he goes to a foot away. We got dudes that are shooting 22% that won't step inside the three-point line. Yo, how dare you? How dare you tell me to step inside the three-point line? This dude is like ridiculous, and he goes a foot away and he swishes everyone. And he builds it over and over and over and over. And I said this to our guys in there, and they don't believe a word I say, because you guys watch the games, but. Um, 
as you can tell, uh, one of the more animated <laughs> press conferences Andy Tool has had over the past few years. I recall, you know, the fairly Dickinson one where he was angry about a missed foul call. But I mean, <laughs> Antoine Davis makes all of us, you know, <laughs> you know, wonder what is going on out there. He was just putting his arms up on the sideline because there's really nothing you can do to guard him. Yeah, that kind of reminded me of the Dennis Green Arizona Cardinals interview where he just started screaming the Bears are who we thought they were. He's <laughs> kind of like screaming, he is what we thought he was. He's a shooter, Pretty much. shooter, shoot. And he basically kind of just said that the Colonials need to shoot better. Yeah, that he does a, a call out to his roster right there. That's right. But our very own Ethan Morrison sat down with one of the PQ's players on the court, Enoch Cheeks, to talk about the season thus far. Ethan, take it away. This season, it, it's been a roller coaster ride throughout. I mean, started off slow. Mm -hmm. You know, start of conference play was also slow, but you were in games, got a win against Northern Kentucky, and then now you're starting to put things together now. So, what, how can you describe what the season has been for you guys? Um, a lot of trials and tribulations. Um, I'm proud. Of the, I'm proud of my team and how we, you know, fight through it every day. Um, a lot of people going down. Everybody just bring each other up, but. Um, like I said, it's just been a roller coaster. It's not the perfect basketball season, but we're just striving um, to make small changes and um, paying paying more attention to detail to make sure that we can pick up games. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, from your freshman season now to your sophomore season, you've had a huge, you know, jump in production. Mm -hmm. So how has that been for you? And, you know, putting in the work throughout, you know, your freshman year going into the offseason, working there, and, you know, putting it all together in this sophomore year? Um, it's, just, it's just good to see that my um, hard work is paying off. Um, I spent a lot of countless hours in the gym this um, this year, this offseason, um, just to work on my shot and things like that, just trying to learn the system more. Um, still have a lot of work to do, but ultimately I'm just proud of how far I came so far. You know, a lot of players, when they find success, you know, the game slows down for them. From year one to year two, do you think the game has slowed down for you a little bit? Yeah, most definitely. Um, finding def different guys in different spots uh, is a lot easier. Reading defenses is a lot easier than last year. Um, just just coming in, come in as a freshman with this system, um, it's kind of hard just to pick it up right away. So definitely having an extra year and just to go through a process again and again and again um, makes it definitely easier for me. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you, if you remember way back in September, I talked to you, Khalil, and Cam, yeah. and you said, you know, I want to be able to get more dunks. I want to dunk this year because I didn't get a dunk last year. Mm -hmm. You've had a lot of big dunks this year. I mean, you put guys on posters, this, yeah. that, and the other. So what has that been like for you to, you know, find that find that element in your game and, you know, elevate your game? Um, it's, been, it's been awesome um, just getting on that rim because I'm, I'm an athletic guy and just trying to showcase my athleticism more and try to use it uh, every chance I get. So it's just been a, a real true uh, excitement for me to, um, to do that. So, mm -hmm. And you know, um, you know, like I said, the season hasn't been ideal, especially in the beginning, but you guys have been able to build some momentum. How big is that for you guys, you know, moving into the end of the regular season and, you know, moving into the conference tournament? Um, it's big. Uh, I think teams are, trying to, are starting to see um, what we're capable of. Um, I know every game that we lost, uh, besides the, every conference game that we lost has been a real um, real fights with other teams. So it was just a matter of, fact, a matter of time of us pushing through that hump, but um, having the momentum and picking up games late on, I think is better rolling into um, the playoffs so we can just connect and glue together and hopefully we can just make a run. And you know, uh, how frustrating was it for you guys, especially in that month of January, to you know lose those close consec games consecutively, and but you know still have that confidence like we're in, we can compete with anyone in this in this league. Uh, it was definitely frustrating, but um, close to it, kept our kept our head high. Um, we went harder in practice. Um, we went harder in everything that we did, and um, the work just paid off, and we started just. Picking up and picking up and winning games. So there's been some roster turnover through you know the past couple of months, but that's all in the past now. And you guys have been able to play together as a team now, as a cohesive unit, or it's starting to see that cohesion now. So how big is that for you guys? You know, can you see some of that chemistry being built now later in the year? Oh yeah, oh yeah. There's some definitely some um, more and better chemistry going on um, from from previous months, but um, it's just a lot of just more gelling that needs to um, happen. But so far, I'm just proud that we can just come from 
all the way in September and just form into a way better team um, later on in the year. Thank you so much for that, Ethan and Enoch, and it's definitely been an interesting jump that he's taken over these first two years. Now, when we come back, I sit down with the women's basketball leading scorer, and we got track, lax, and the bat. Stay tuned here on Colonial Sports Center. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover their unique mix of all kinds of traits. Where did Wiley go? Where's Wiley? Ah, there she is. Pa? Do you remember being on Asia Wolf? Do you ever feel the call of the wild? You're a renegade cop, and I'm a con woman with nothing to prove. But together, we could really solve this murder. They're a little bit of a lot of things. But all of them are pure love. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center for this lovely Valentine's edition of the show. But we're going to keep it on the hardwood for you, but the women's basketball team now. They were looking to take flight against the Green Bay Phoenix. Were they able to do so? Let's take a look. And unfortunately, no, they were grounded by the Phoenix. They lost 57-41. to 41. Haley Oshi had four, went 4 for 9 for 10 points. Nina Augusta went 4 for 8 from 3-point range for 12 points. Mackenzie Amelia went 3 for 6 from 3 points for 9, for nine points. The Colonials ended up falling in this one. And it's no question that Esther Castillo, who did not play in that game, is in the midst of her best season as a Colonial during her senior year. I had a chance to catch up with the guard and talk about her season thus far and her connection with one of the players from Spain that joined the team this year. To start things off, you know, you've been here, like you said, for four years, and you've developed into one of the more consistent players on the team. You've gotten better every year. How have you seen yourself, I guess, just grow over these four years, especially moving conferences and stuff like that? I think my role has definitely improved. I think coming up as a freshman that you don't have as much, not pressure, but as much responsibility as the seniors. And now once you start getting um, better and better in the years, I think you're starting to see your role, what you can do, what you cannot do, and just pretty much help the team. That's, that's what I think that I can do, and that's how, oh my God, that's how I'm, yeah. Doing it. Right. So, and then this year, obviously, you're having, you know, your best year since you've been here, um, you know, being really relied upon on the team. How does that feel to be trusted as a player on this team, especially, you know, since you started off coming off the bench as a freshman and now you're here as a senior as one of the, you know, more senior leaders on the team? Feels great. Uh, I think, I think um, everyone is looking for the same thing. Everyone's looking for the minutes, for the responsibility, for uh, the trust in and the coaches have trust in you, the teammates trust in you, and I think it's it's great um, as well. I'm just having fun out there. Yeah, it looks like it. it's, uh, it's guys are having a pretty solid season. So, and then another thing with that is, you know, other teams are sort of trying to focus on stopping you. I mean, is that like a respect thing for you, or like you, you know, feel good that like they're you're the one that they're looking at when you go out there? Um, again, I think basketball is a team sport, right. so I think. As much as they want to stop me, they need to stop the other four players in the court. Right. So if they just stop me, I know that my, team, my teammates can score, and I know that I trust them. So I think it's more stopping the team rather than just me. Right, yeah. So, um, and then this year, obviously, you know, Coach B has been away from the team for a while, and Coach Schneider's had to step up. Um, what's it been like without Coach B, and then how has Coach Schneider really stepped up in his absence for you guys? Um, I think it's different. Uh, they have different ways of coaching us, uh, talking to us, I think um, it took us a little while to just adapt to a new, a new coaching style, but I really like it. I think Coach Schneider is doing a really good job of uh, being the head coach, and I just have full trust in him. So. Yeah, and do you think he's sort of, you know, really brought the team together during this time, especially as you guys go against some of the tough teams in the conference? I think we definitely improved as a team. Um, I think it was more 
like us connecting with each other and with the coaching staff as well. Like we're such a young team, we have um, seven or eight new newcomers. So I think it was more that we needed that time to fully develop our team. Right. And speaking of newcomers, you know, one of them is from Spain, like you and uh, Alejandra. What's your connection with her been like? Have you sort of taken her under your wing this year? Um, definitely a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I think it's, I don't know, I feel like we have that connection, uh, both being from Spain. And I think we see the court in very different, uh, very similar ways. Um, I think it's just great that she's doing so good and I'm so happy for her to do it. Thank you, Tyler and Esther. And if you want to see more interviews like that and so much more, make sure to check out ColonialSportsNetwork.com. They have game recaps, features, and podcasts for you. The vi writers and videographers over there have you covered as the men's and women's basketball team close their regular season and the spring sports begin to ramp up. All there at ColonialSportsNetwork.com and on Twitter at RMU underscore CSN. Now, when we come back, we're going to hit the field for you here for track and field, lacrosse, and softball, and also top five plays are still on the way later in the show here when I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We had this. Wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. 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 I could go back and change it all. I would. I, would. I think I'm going to miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Or maybe it's just the little moments. I could go back. I could go back and change it all. I could go back. I would. But I can't. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Welcome back here to Colonial Sports Center. Now, last season, men's lacrosse was leading Duke at uh, after the first quarter. Could they top the top dog in this game, top dog in the NCAA? Let's take a look. It's the other Farad at Koskinen Stadium. And unfortunately, they fell by a score of 21-12. to 12. Brennan O'Neill, six goals on seven shots. He had an incredible, he, and he had nine goals in his first two games of the year as he took on Vermont in their second one. Tiger Clark put up four goals. He's having a pretty interesting start of the year. And, of course, Corson Keeley put up a hat trick in this game. But the Colonials could not muster up enough offense to take out the Blue Devils. Now, last year, Tyler, the women's lacrosse team was able to win the MAC. Now, let's take a look at what the preseason polls has, has for this team ahead. And it looks like they're going to win this one here. As the, Last year, they went 10-0 in the MAC, 32 points. Central Michigan was up there as well, 31 and set. 31 points and 72 overall. What are you thinking here, Tyler? This is a team that demands respect. Yes, they've lost the Gandy Twins and they lost Cleo Kerr, but this is a team that absolutely can and will replicate that scoring success. I can't see any of these teams except maybe Central Michigan taking them over. They're probably not going to go 10-0 again, mm. but this is a team, like I said, that demands respect, a team that's going to get back into the NCAA tournament and maybe not get shut out this time. Definitely. They could even pull off the upset this year. There's not a single team in the MAC that I think that is going to win, especially here in Joel Allen Stadium. There's not a single team that's going to come here and win. The only team that I can remotely see even winning a game is Central Michigan, but it's, it's the Colonials Conference to lose. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, Colby, I agree. But the show keeps running along here as the track and field team competed once again in the Bob Cannon Invitational. Let's see how they fared in that one. And it was a good day there. Tor Hunter first in the weight throw, 17.64 meters. Estelle Kakende first in shot put. Tara Gol Golgram first in long jump. But, Tyler, let's take a look at the 4x4. Four four. They came in second, Ian Moore. Uh, Ian Moore led the way, but over there, D.C. Bethany Naughton, our very own, was part of the team, part of the 4x4 where they ran 4-16-22. Yeah, How definitely a good performance altogether and a great performance by that 4x4 team in that race. And just uh, the team is, like we said, going along in their season. We keep running along, like you said. Now, let's send it over to Ty, or, uh, Sam Goldberg and Michael Diemer. To, uh, let's see what they got cooking up for us. Thank you, Colby. Today we were talking about softball today, and along joined us Sam Goldberg. And Goldberg, 
I just have a question for you. Uh, what does this team slot in the uh, Horizon League? They were placed fourth in the preseason poll among the coaches that was announced today. So believe it or not, Deemer, uh, I was actually really shocked to see that the softball team was ranked fourth in the preseason poll. Uh, I really do strongly disagree with the rating. I feel like uh, the Colonials are a much better team than UIC. And honestly, I, I'm, you know, 20 and 14, first year in the Horizon League too. I feel like they were really good for their first year in the Horizon League, really making a statement. And they're gonna look to become a household name here in the Horizon League this year. Um, you know, I feel like all around uh, with a full schedule, I think they're going to go 44 and 20 on the year. And I really feel like, feel like this team is going to finish top three in the conference. And they did, they did lose some of their key people, but who is your player to watch? They, did, they do have some people that may rise up to the occasion. You know, I'm glad you asked me, I'm glad you asked me that question, Deemer, because, you know, one of the superstars from last year on this team, Erica Bell, returning this year, three home runs, 19 RBIs, uh, and a 303 batting average as well. You know, Erica Bell really showed out uh, last year for the Colonials, and I really feel like she's going to slot into that three and four hole this year. And <coughs> more importantly, uh, you know, you'll see her numbers increase too. I'm looking at, I'm, I think she's going to go double digits in home runs and maybe creep up there in the 40, 50 RBI range. But we'll see. So, uh, some of the new faces that we have, they're going to move to the Pacific Northwest in a non conference play, but what are some games that you may have circled on the calendars, what are the what is the team looking for this season? So I have a couple games scheduled uh, on the on the ro or on the schedule for them. Uh, first things first, uh, though they got an invite to the Winthrop tournament, uh, the Invitational, which uh, they'll see teams like Winthrop and Albany, and I'm really intrigued to see how they'll play against Albany. Uh, they play uh, two matches against Albany in that in that Invitational, so. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how the Colonials fare in that. I'm also looking forward to seeing how they do against Oregon State and Washington. Both games are on the road. Honestly, upset alert in one of the two. I don't know. I like it. I like the Colonials in one of those games. I feel like one of those teams is gonna is gonna make a, is gonna take them lightly, and the Colonials are gonna get the win. And finally, their first Horizon League uh, matchup against Green Bay. It's the first series, three game series at home. Looking forward to seeing how the Colonials will fare in their Horizon League match play. And they play North Carolina a and tomorrow, a doubleheader, and they also play on Friday. Uh, how do you think they'll do in that? Uh, I feel like it'll be smooth sailing against North Carolina a and I mean, uh, Robert Morris, uh, pretty good pretty good track record uh, against North Carolina a and And I really like the Colonials in the series. I think they'll win the series uh, two games to one and, you know, start off on the right foot. And we, we have top plays coming up at your – your favorite segment on CSE. Bring it. Later. Mom wants us home. Okay. Bye, guys. You guys need a ride? Sure. Oh, yeah. All right. How about some one on one? Uh, I gotta go eat, man. Sorry. I'll, I'll see you later. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. We have our own dynamic duo, Ethan Morrison and Bethany Naughton, to break down the best segment, the top five plays of the week. Ethan and Bethany, take it away. Well, thank you, Colby. I'm joined by Bethany Naughton. Let's check out our top five plays of the week. Let's get it going right now. 
kicking it off at number five. Number five. I'm going to go to defensive action by Mr. Cam Ferris. This is only his third game back. He's making his impact. Now, here, look at this block. Swat it down. Get that out of here. Look at that block by Cam Ferris. Got a technical foul on that. Kevin McAdoo got blocked. He was ejected later. I can't believe you just, like, swatted it. I kick, kick yeah, I did. Number four. How about Khalil Spear with his little dog strike baseline to the hoop. Slammed it home there. Can you even jump that high? Do you think you can? I can. I can. You probably can. You probably can. Maybe. Go to number three. Go to number three. How about some lacrosse action in their opening game against you? Courtney Keeley. Look at this. Oh! He tripped like that Duke defender. He tripped like that you all the time. <laughs> Look at this by Keeley. Look at this little move. Made him fall down. Just like that. You forgot to add something really important. He had a hat trick. That's true. That's true. Number two. Number two. Look at this. Look at this play. To Matt Ayers. Right over top of Noah Waterman. What a dunk. I think that was higher than Khalil, actually. It might have been. Now, number one, for your top play of this week. Look at this. Khalil Spear once again goes up for the big jam. Just up and just one hand just down. He flew. Incredible. And that concludes another top five plays of the week on St. Benjamin. If you join me this week, I want to send it back over to Colby and Tyler. Thank you so much for that, Bethany and Ethan. And, you know, we just watched some of the best plays from the games last week. Now let's take a look at some of the games that we're going to watch this week. Colby, what are you looking at this weekend? All right, let's take a look at my game I think you should watch this weekend. And I think you should watch the women's basketball team taking on Cleveland State at the Wolf Game Center in Cleveland, Ohio. The last time the Colonials went that they played, they went 63 to 55 at the UPNC Event Center on December 30th, before the new year there. My player to watch, of course, Esther Chisito. You interviewed her earlier. 11.4 points per game, about three assists, and about four rebounds. All over there for the Vikings, Destiny Leo, about near 19 points a game, 2.4 assists, 2.4 rebounds. That's the game you gotta watch. A nice Pennsylvania versus Ohio rivalry there going to be a good game. That's right, and definitely keep an eye on Esther Casito. She's become an elite stat sheet stuffer for this team, especially after that game she had against Detroit Mercy. It's incredible. Now, moving it over to the Diamond, I'm going to take a look at the softball team as they kick off their season this weekend. That's right, and I'm looking at Elena York, 294 batting average, almost 300. Last season, RMU had their first ever 25-win season in program history, and you're going to watch out for Alex Estrada, not shown there. She drew 25, 25 walks last season, and she is a beast for this team, but I think you know, these teams have never played each other. It's a chance for Army to get their season off the right foot as they're heading down there this weekend. But they're going to be an exciting team to watch. They always are. Who wouldn't love to watch softball in some nice spring weather? Honestly, softball is always a great game to watch. There's a very nice stadium down here uh, on the campus. But one of my favorite things to watch last year, definitely. But I'm excited for a couple matchups. Of course, you got to know. I'm excited when they play Pitt. That's right. Big Pitt guy over here. But oh, I'll be rooting for the Colonials. Of course, you got to know that. But against Washington, uh, Washington State, and Oregon State. Some Power 5 matchups this year are very exciting. That's right, and their first trip out to the Pacific Northwest in a long time for this program. I think the last time they went there was 2016. They haven't been out there in a long time, but this team, you know, they, they went out to Nevada that last time, by the way, and this is a team, once again, like I said about women's across, demands respect. They finished in fourth. While they were sort of, they ran into a brick wall into the, in the Horizon League tournament, having to play the number one seed in Youngstown State. You know, it further galvanized this group as a team that is going to have experience now, now that they got that under their belt. Jax Varner is definitely the right man for the job. Definitely, and as you're going back out to that Pacific Northwest trip, they have a couple of games with DHs. I believe Seattle and Washington State both are DH games in that one as well. That's right, and CSN is actually going on the road this weekend as we travel to Ohio State for women's across. They're playing indoor at the Woody, uh, I couldn't remember his last name, but the uh, Athletic Center. It's going to be an interesting, uh, and, and opposed to Ohio State and Woody Hayes, um, uh, it's going to be a good game for this team to kick off this year. It's going to serve as a barometer for the talent level they could face if they get back to the, to the NCAA tournament. And now, I want to know what you're thinking about the men's basketball game this Sunday and also Friday. Oakland, they take on here, and then Youngstown State in at the Beakley Center in Youngstown. They're definitely going to need Khalil Spear to step up. They're going to win the game. Cam Ferris knocking down threes and Enoch Chase. We were talking about him. But it's good. I think they take both games and continue to build on what's been an improvement over last year. Less of a dumpster fire. Almost. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, um, Sunday, again, CSN will be on the road for that game coverage. So stay tuned for all of our coverage. Once again, go to ColonialSportsNetwork.com. Follow us on Twitter at Army underscore CSN, of course, and our new Instagram at Colonial Sports Network. Put some more behind-the-scenes content out there 
as we, you know, get into the home stretch of the season for the basketball teams. And of course, we start off with spring sports. Well, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. For everyone down here, I've been Tyler Gallo. For Colby Sherwin, we will see you next Thursday here on Colonial Sports Center.